Khayal and Dhrupad are primarily compositional forms and are respectively the main compositional forms used in the genres of Khayal and Dhrupad. Um, there is much scholarly debate about the origins of these two styles. Um, it is generally agreed that Dhrupad is older. Some scholars believe that Khayal has links to forms like the Jombhada that is also mentioned in the Sangeeta Ratnakara. There are others who argue for a Persian Arabic connection and influence. The very word Khayal is Urdu and suggests Khayal's connections with Persian and Arabic culture. Uh, in fact, the word Khayal means idea, imagination, thought, whereas um, Dhrupada means Dhruvapada, that is fixed or enduring text. So, even the very names are suggestive of some very fundamental differences between the two forms. Now, clear textual sources are hard to come by, but uh, especially about the origin of Khayal. But uh, musical lore generally includes uh, three names in the context of a discussion of the origins of Khayal. These are Amir Khusro, 14th century, and then you have Sultan Hussein Sharki of the 15th century and Niamat Khan, whom we have talked about before, of the 18th century. Now, Amir Khusro was uh, an inordinately talented man. He was a writer and scholar attached to royal courts of the Delhi Sultanate. Uh, Delhi Sultanate rulers including Alauddin Khilji. He was a prolific poet, a gifted musician and a dedicated disciple of the Sufi saint Nizamuddin Auliya. So, Amir Khusro is credited uh, with the creation of Kavali, among other things. The, the musical form Kavali is a musical form that is performed in Sufi Dargas. Um, and such is the legendary status of the man that he is credited with the invention of the tabla, the sitar, as well as the khayal. Um, scholars, however, find it hard to substantiate these claims. Uh, his contribution to khayal uh, and its evolution continue to be debated, especially you know, given the fact that he does not mention the name Khayal anywhere in his prolific writings. Now, Sultan Hussein Sharki of Jain, uh, Jaunpur was himself a musician and a generous patron of the Khayal form and Niamat Khan Sadarang, as we all know, uh, was a court musician in the uh, Mughal Emperor Muhammad Shah Rangila's uh, during his reign and uh, Sadarang's Khayal compositions are still performed and are among the oldest available Khayal compositions whose authorship is known. So, without going into details of the debate of the origins of Khayal and it is a fascinating debate, uh, it must be said that it remains an unsolved issue. Uh, it is also possible that seeking a single origin theory may be fallacious. Musical forms rarely have a single trajectory of evolution. Now, uh, scholars have uh, suggested and musicians also, there is a tradition of uh, belief that the compositional form and style of presentation of Khayal uh, has been influenced by Kavali and tappa, which are two other genres of uh, North Indian music. Tappa is characterized by a profusion of fast, uh, very short and uh, sharp melodic runs or tans throughout the composition. The composition itself is studded with tans, very, very intricate and very dense, densely clustered tans. Bola suna jani soya re sanu mande jande e bande e 
and uh, see khayal uh, incorporates taan in its vistar as we have seen and dhrupad does not so it is easy to speculate that khayal was influenced by tappa and as for kavali the use of the text of the song for improvisation and uh, its manner of word and rhythm play are both quite distinctive in khayal might have drawn upon these elements in its bol band especially um we will see in uh, especially we, we saw in uh, the lecture demonstration by pandit satyashil desh pandey how agra uh, gharana the way it creates bol band and the way it plays with the words and creates mukhra mukhra bandi that uh, has very close parallels with the Uh, kavali tradition so kavali tappa all these musical genres uh, are regarded as having influenced khayal but if we were to consider which form of presentation khayal is closest to at least today it would be dhrupad not tappa or kavali so the basic texture of presentation as it moves from very slow and leisurely to fast from the sparse to the dense this is like dhrupad not tappa or kavali so what are the main differences between khayal and dhrupad khayal and dhrupad differ in the ornaments that are employed khayal we may say somewhat more generous with a variety of ornaments used and uh, again within schools of khayal some schools employ more variety than others um whereas dhrupad enters each tonal area and explores it with great intensity and uh, khayal on the other hand is more vested in melodic phrases the uh, dhrupad has been deeply impacted by the majestic instrument been rudra been while khayal especially the prominent school of kirana gharana has been impacted by the sound of the sarangi there are of course schools of khayal uh, that have been influenced by dhrupad and therefore by been indirectly now khayal again differs in its what may, what is called taal vyavastha that is the relation between the text and the taal and how the taal binds the music is different Uh, in khayal the the compositions in dhrupad are bound in taal in a different way and of course i'm speaking of uh, music of the past 100 years or so for which we have documented uh, music we have music recordings khayal is also different from dhrupad in its inclusion of taans as as i've said and all elements of improvisation or vistar are moved into the composition and the act of filling the avartan and taking the mukhra become central to uh, the khayal presentation in dhrupad alap which is the most uh, important aspect of vistar the alap is sung entirely before the composition and that is quite extensive and then after that the composition is rendered and then bol laya or the rhythmic patterns using the text of the song are performed so that is the dhrupad presentation the song structure of dhrupad is also different and uh, in general the importance that dhrupad places on the composition is not found in khayal now overall uh it has been argued and it is frequently said that khayal presents a less rule bound idiom for musical exploration compared to dhrupad now uh what does this mean what sense can we make of this hmm? there are a few areas where khayal seems to loosen up as compared to dhrupad first the compositional form of khayal 
is very short. Just four lines, usually running into just four avratanas. Drupad compositions are generally longer and uh, traditionally they ran into four parts. And Drupad as a genre is deeply vested in the composition, in the pada, its textual beauty and integrity. Khayal treats the composition more cursorily. Uh, at least some schools definitely uh, don't give the composition itself much importance. Certainly an attitude of reverence that we find among Drupad performers for composition is rarely found among Khayalias. And as I said, in fact, uh, some schools or gharanas of Khayal pay almost no attention to the lyrical aspect of the bandesh. The bandesh serves merely as a peg to work improvisation around it. Now with the status of the composition itself somewhat reduced, the stage is set for bringing improvisation to center stage and so in this sense it is uh, more a freer form. Uh, I use the word freer advisedly. It is it's freer in the sense that one particular restraint, uh, some restraints are not there. That does not necessarily mean that it is better. The setting of the composition in Thala is different. Khayal compositions are typically more melismatic. That is, they are not tied down to the matras of the Thal, but they flow between the matras and the composition itself is fitted into the avartan of the Thal with some degree of freedom and variability. Whereas Drupad compositions are more rigorously set in Thal with the uh, composition tied down to individual matras. Certainly, there is not this kind of the, the, the extent of uh, variation that uh, khayal compositions are subject to that we do not find in Drupad. Laya. In Drupad, the laya remains the same throughout the presentation. That is, a composition is rendered at a particular laya, an improvisation in the form of bowl bant is performed with various rhythmic variations. There is a rhythm, rhythmic play. Definitely, but the laya of the composition is not changed. Whereas in Khayal, in most schools of Khayal, the laya of the tala is increased as the presentation progresses. And this makes for uh, greater variety and excitement, which for the Drupad lover could be a sign of decadence. Drupad singers often stress that their intention is not to offer excitement and entertainment and their musical performances are more of an inward journey, almost a spiritual journey. Then we have elements of improvisation. These are alap, bol alap, bol bant, bol tan, taan, etc. These are woven uh, into the composition, right? Once the composition is rendered, these are performed within the structure of the tal. And there is a lot of freedom regarding how these elements are brought together. So, there is no one template to say that first you sing alab, then you sing bol alab, then you sing bol band, then ta. No, there is no such thing. Uh, definitely, once the, uh, the presentation has progressed to some extent, then there is a lot of freedom regarding how these various elements are brought together. Whereas in Drupad and also Carnatic music, a certain arrangement of the presentation is expected. So in Drupad, as I said, it is Alap, then the Bandish, then Laikari. In Khayal, the Bandish is presented and then Alap, Bol, Alap, Bol, Lai, Tans, etc. are woven into the presentation according to the school according to the musical sensibility of the performer, according to the moment. The nature of percussive accompaniment is different. Uh, we have seen this uh, earlier in the lesson on tabla. And uh, since the khayal singer does not keep tala in his hand, but leaves that to the tabla player, there is another very important kind of freeing up. So, to uh, repeat the point I made earlier, in traditional art music, it is not necessarily 
a virtue to be freer. Uh, restraints define a musical tradition in an important way. Dhrupad musicians cherish the restraints of their genre just as Khayal musicians cherish theirs while also celebrating the fact that some of the restraints of uh, Dhrupad are not for them to worry about. And uh, so one of the uh, very important differences between the two genres is the restraints that they acknowledge. And um, there are clearly many areas where Khayal does not acknowledge the restraints that Dhrupad does. And while Khayal might celebrate this, Dhrupad might see this as a corruption. So Dhrupad then um, presents a very different aesthetic and approach to raga presentation from Khayal. Broadly, uh, Dhrupad, uh, the Dhrupad genre is uh, regarded as having four main styles, though uh, doubtless there are some others, but the main styles which are called Bani, the Bani is the uh, equivalent of Gharana. So the Bani is a style and there are four main Banis of Dhrupad and these are Dagar, Nohar, Govarhar and Khandahar. And there is um, a pithy uh, couplet which captures the broad features of these four Banis and it's this Zor Zor Se Khandahar Gave Madhu Bole Se Nohar Leve Saas Badi Hai Gohar Ki Ailapchari Hai Dagur Ki The poem indicates that the Khandahar Bani became famous due to its voice culture. Zor Zor Se Bole There is broad and high pitched tones, forceful expression. The Nohar Bani was, uh, is famous for its sweet and delicate expression. The Gobarhar Bani was known for its deep and sustained breath control. Saas Badi Hai. And the Dagar Bani developed great expertise in uh, Alapchari with much attention to the uh, treatment of the Swaras. The next few video modules Pandit Ritvik Sanyal, who is a noted exponent of Dhrupad and, of, and former head of the Department of Music of the Benares Hindu University, will take us through important facets of Dhrupad. Pandit Sanyal is a representative of the Dagarbani of uh, Dhrupad. Uh, in fact, the Dagarbani of Dhrupad has been the most prominent Bani for the past century or so. So let us enter the world of Drupad with Pandit Ritvik Sanyal. 